Hey, welcome back. Okay, Deb, grooming, show grooming, tricks of the trade. Boy, am I showing you a lot of good tricks today, especially when it comes to show grooming. So, um, Neil, my cameraman, and my grip, since he's been cleaning up the floor all day, he's going to hold this wide screen on top. And he's real tall, too. How tall are you, Neil? Six foot. Woo! That's a good one. Okay, that's good. Sorry. If you get tired, just let me know. I can see in the camera in the mirror what he's looking like. Oh, all right. Cool. All right. And my Facebook friends over here. All right. Belgium comb is a must. Okay. Now I think I'm going to have to move you guys over here. There we go. Hit dismiss. We back? Yeah, it says live. Okay. So, now, by angling this comb, that's what's going to give you the depth. There's going to be some places along here that need to be shorter, some need to be longer. It's up to the individual dog. And again, the very last image that you want to create for the judge is a straight top line, flat, flat top line. All right, so we're going to start back here at the tail. Now, you see how my comb... And what I'm doing with this, and depending on how I bend the comb, that's much hair. And I'm just going right across the top of that comb. So this is what's called back combing. Now, I learned this from the illustrious George Austin when he was specialing royal steward. And that dog looked absolutely incredible. George was a master at grooming. And that dog's top coat was weird. It was hard. It was a bit, a bit wiry. And given to its own nature, it probably would have been a wavy coat. But again, that would have been fine. But, you know, George wanted to present the dog in the normal flat-coated way, if you will. And uh, boy, people used to henpeck him. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? And um, I was working at the time for Bobby and Susan Fisher and going back and forth between George's kennel and the Fisher's kennel up in Catonsville, helping at shows, helping at kennel, babysitting all weekends at George's, kind of wherever I needed to go. And George told me, okay, I'm going to show you, and to my knowledge, other than the apprentices that were with him at that time, um, I'm pretty sure I was the first outside person that he ever allowed in his grooming shop to show me what he did with Stuart. And we weren't speaking. He said, I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. You can just watch me work this top coat the way I'm working it, and you have to promise me that you will never breathe a word to a living human being. What I'm doing, of course, I promise. And that's where I learned back homing. Okay, over here on this side. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'm lifting this coat and I'm going. Yeah, follow me with the camera if you can. Yeah, maybe get over here. I know it's going to be hard. Wait, there's a tripod. Hold on. Oh. Careful. Okay. My Facebook people are getting in the way. There you go. All right. We good? Yeah, we're good. All right. So um, I am going against the hair. And I'm just trimming what's popping up over the top of this comb. Now, this is the side that I have not trimmed yet. And every time you go over it, you take your brush and you brush. This is sticking up, so I'm gonna get rid of that. It's just a matter of doing a little bit, doing a little bit, doing a little bit. And this is why I'm saying don't wait two months in between trimming these show dogs. It gets to be too much. Too much for them, too much for you. And I certainly wouldn't tell you at that point to groom it all in one setting. I might do it over the course of a few days. Because it's just it's too much for the dog. Okay, I'm trying to 
Okay. I'm going to come up here now. I'm going to stop before I get into the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, step back. And up. There you go. All right, now look how long all this is. You can see how long, how long this is. That's real long. But I'm going to keep it long. Okay, now I'm pulling that hair up and I'm just trimming off the top. If that is real long in there, and this was fairly short back here, then that means the last time I groomed that dog, I did that for a reason. I don't know why right now, but you are not going to leave the same length here. It's going to be different lengths the whole way up, because at the end, when you brush all this back, you want to stand back and just see a, a straight top coat. And all that, the whole, the whole top line of this dog can be sculpted in by hand. Right. You have no idea what you're looking at when you're outside this ring. And you're looking inside the ring at these dogs. Trust me. You have no idea. Especially when they're being handled by the better handlers slash groomers. It would just amaze you what that dog really is underneath all that grooming. I've only known one judge in my life that could unmask a dog's grooming. And that was Ann Rogers Clark. She was probably one of the best, obviously. She was famed and famous for poodles and then got into English cockers later in life. But uh, a poodle is nothing but a hair sculpted ball. And she was famous for breeding and showing and trimming poodles. So trust me, if anybody's going to know how you can take hair and change a dog's conformation, it's a poodle groomer and breeder and handler. So she could go through a springer with her hands during the examination and she would know exactly the places and parts to look and check for quote unquote cosmetic grooming. And to those of us who were lucky enough to be in her little family, if she came to a cosmetically groomed area and she put her hands into the dip on the dog's top line that I have covered up by my grooming, she would give me a look underneath those glasses that were usually at the bottom of her nose while she was going over the dog. And she and I would have a silent, yes, I know this dog has a crappy top coat. You know it, I know it, so let's just move on. But there was no way to hide trick grooming from that lady. But as far as I know, um, <laughs> every other judge in the world, I can shim sham with grooming. Okay, so. So, again, it's just a matter of going over, over, and then the sides here, I blend in, going down. Okay, now this is pretty much done through here, as you can see. And this up here, the Bermuda Triangle from the occiput behind the shoulders down to the elbows. That triangle, that is the very last place I trim on every dog. And I call it the Bermuda Triangle because that's what it is. If you're going to screw up your grooming somewhere, that's where it's going to get screwed up. So that is the last that I do. All right, let, let me have this now. Okay. Oh, there's that. And there's that. And there's that. Okay. Now, so here is the picture that I want to show the judge. That nice, flat top line. Okay. Now, this dog actually has a very good, very, very, very good top line. 
so there isn't a whole lot of cosmetic grooming and his front end is gorgeous where I would fought this dog he's got doesn't have enough depth of thigh thickness of thigh and he doesn't have enough angulation back here he's a little straight in the rear okay so but his front end in his shoulders and his length of neck I mean his whole front end is to die for so there won't be a lot of corrective grooming there but there is all this bushy gross hair I'm gonna do a little bit today but until I get that towel flat with a 24 hour soaking wet bath now he's dry I'm not gonna put the towel on for 24 hours he's gonna go back in the bathtub today and get soaking wet and re-toweled and then dry again so with the film rolling okay now I'm gonna do a little bit and I have no idea how to do this to where I'm not, like blocking everybody with the camera all right so um de dum de dum de it's out on the wall um de dum de dum de had a great fall Okay, that's clipping his hair. That is not clipping his ears. I do not have it on his ear leathers. Okay, so, and honestly, normally, normally I don't even do this. I'm just doing this to kind of get it out of the way so you guys can see what I'm trimming. Okay, we're good to go. Alright, so, so here's the back combing and I'm using the wide part of the comb not the narrow so again I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna go into the Bermuda Triangle you know, Neil's not going anywhere oh he's not gonna tolerate that very long can't say that I'm blaming either <laughs> Right. All right, so I'm hoping you guys can see this. Anyway, so I'm gonna lift this hair and go up. Now here I want it really long, because what? I've got to retow this dog. I'm gonna take off a lot of the excess right now, but I've trimmed this dog his whole life so I you know I have a pretty clear idea what I need to leave up there to make it right and again because his front end and his shoulders and his neck don't need any corrective grooming but I'm not gonna take a whole lot off because I'm not gonna be able to really trim this until this hair has been toweled properly then again there's always this it's just a matter of being patient just one little bit at a time, one little bit at a time. Don't be in a hurry. Uh, if I owned this dog and had not groomed him for two months, I would not do this all in one day. As a matter of fact, I haven't done the other side of the dog and I'm not going to today. Way, way, way too much for him. I don't like keeping dogs up on grooming tables this long. I'd say for a trained dog, for a dog that knows exactly what's going on and they're trained and they're used to it, 45 minutes would be my top. And then they are done for that day. So whatever I get done in a half an, half an hour, 45 minutes. All right, so you can start to see that really, really, really pretty line coming in and down and across okay now he may need a little bit of help in here if you put your hands on this dog this dog's top line is gorgeous but again here here you're fighting hair against structure and the the final picture that you want to show the dog show the judge is with the hair <laughs> so I, I can run my hand down this dog's top line and go oh my god that's just a, such a gorgeous top line it's like perfect but because of the way the hair falls in here it, that it makes it look like he's softer in the top line here which this dog is absolutely not and the uh the only way 
that you can really tell what a dog's top line is, is when they're moving, not when they're standing. This is not a breed that you judge standing. Number one, there's too many ways to carve out all this hair and give an optical illusion of a really good springer. When in reality, it's not a good dog at all, but it's all grooming. It's all grooming. And number two, I don't care how good of a groomer you are, when that dog is moving in the ring, in the side gate, forget the up and back, in the side gate around the ring, that is when you're seeing the real true structure of that dog. You're seeing the angles of its front, its rear, its top line, that is it. So this is a breed that you have to judge moving, not standing. There's too many ways to groom these dogs to cover up every single flaw that they have. And that's just the truth of it. Now look, see how much better we've gotten? So you can see what I'm building on here, and I'm just doing it a little bit at a time. I, honestly, uh, I would probably take three, do three days to trim this dog to where he's tight and ready to go back in the show ring, and that's when I'll give him back to Daddy Neil. But I need three days, because he shouldn't be like up on this groomy table forever and ever and ever. <laughs> You just keep going. Okay. You heard my thinning shear go click, click, then I would move it. Click, click, and I would move it. Click, click, and I would move it. One or two clicks, and then move it. Click, click, move it. That's all I want to do on these sides until after I retell him. But wow, what a difference already. I think all of you can see that. What a huge, huge, huge difference already. Okay, now you're all going, oh, but what do you do with the Bermuda Triangle? All right, I, honestly, I'm gonna have to finish this tomorrow after he's after he's towed. The hair here grows this direction. So what direction does my thinning shear go? The direction the hair grows. It's growing here. It's growing this direction up here. Okay, it's growing this direction. You can see the way the hair grows. Well, a lot of times on springers, look, back here, it's growing this way. So that's the way I change my shear. Okay. Yes, we will do all of this, the Bermuda Triangle, tomorrow after he's been toweled. Okay. But I showed you how to do the hocks and how to actually create more and better angles for the show ring with all of this grooming. Okay, top line to die for in this dog. Body nice and barrel shaped. This is a dog to die for. I have always, 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 always loved this dog. He's gorgeous, probably one of the finest dogs I have ever bred. Sadly, I ran out of time and effort and energy in my life to special a dog. And uh, when my sister and I first started specialing dogs with Jeffrey and King of the Road, that was a time when a breeder did have a shot of showing a dog every weekend. And if not beating Houston Clark or Bobby Barlow for the number one spot with a Sally Lynn dog, then for sure at least the breeder or the beginning handler could be number two. Like we were with King of the Road, Kathy and I. We have a number two Springer. To freaking Houston Clark with this Ellie Lynn dog. Okay, but that's just the way it is. All right, so we can see just how pretty that is now. 
Now let's look at the side that we haven't done to remind us where we started. Yucko, let me bring in the camera. Camera eyes. And again, he shakes and I let him shake. Okay, so this is the side. Not done. Yuck. Yuck, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Yuck. Really, I don't know if I could get fourth place in a class of four. <laughs> I'd be hard pressed. Maybe my aunt, my uncle, my grandmother, you know, one of those. Okay, but you turn him around. Here we go, turn around, turn around, turn around. How much fun. And this is why I'm saying, this is a breed that has to be judged moving. Because you can create this dog from scratch with hair. Let me come up here, oh I know. With hair. This still needs to be toweled down, but you get the drift. Look at that. What a difference. Wow. So there is your perfect picture. And you can also see why this dog finished with specialty majors. Because that's, that's a to die for dog. But he's not perfect. And we had to do some corrective grooming back here, which was a good thing to show you. So I think for today, that will wrap it up because I don't want to overdo with him. But again, there is the picture on your wall. Okay. And there, that's just hair sticking up. But that's what you want to trim to. Okay. That's just hair that I haven't trimmed down. <laughs> but that is the picture you want to trim to. So even though the dog in this picture, it's so hard to do that without the glare on it, has a beautiful rear end. If you look at the way I trimmed him, not too far off, not too far off. So there you can see, there's Uncle Connor. Ah! <laughs> that's good all right so we can see and that will be it for today on baby Carson I will be back tomorrow to finish the whole top coat of the dog and the Bermuda Triangle and he needs a break and yes I definitely need a glass of wine <laughs> yes, Neil, the coffee has worn off <laughs> and the wine has not kicked in yet. <laughs> so that's where I am headed next. I was so glad that everybody could join me for today. Um, Carson will be glad to get off the table. I'm going to take him back and retowel him so I can bring him back out tomorrow and finish up our show grooming of the English Springer Spaniel, at least the black and white coats. The liver coats are an entirely different day. Do you see Kira anywhere real quick? Can you grab her? She's on the chair over there. Just bring her. Oh, the camera's rolling. Oh, my God. Carson. <laughs> All right, free, free. Here, put her up. Well, I still have her attention. Okay, poor Kira. She's, like, certainly overdone her time on the screen table over the last... you now look how much hot hair I have on her hardly any now if I was showing her I might have a tad bit more but she doesn't need it and of course she's in a pet trim you know otherwise that would be over but look at this big wide chunky thigh come on go forward big wide chunky thigh looks like I lose my microphone I lost my microphone Anyway, big wide, big wide, 
chunky thigh. And when they're in condition, you should be able to go like this, and it's like this big, hard, thick, wide ham bone. Oh boy, is that nice. Look, look at the big width all in here. And then in thirds, third, third, third. And she should not be as angulated behind as she is in the front. Again, the proportions on this dog are just ideal. So I will be using her next week too. But don't need any corrective grooming on that rear. And look how wide this thigh is. So once again, Kira has her spot. Yes. Okay. Now I am going to say bye. And Neil, go get me a glass of wine. And we're all going to say goodbye. And I'll see you next time on Dog Tricks of the Trade. Say goodbye, Kira. Goodbye, Kira. Bye-bye. Get me off the table. Bye-bye.